Warner. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Let me just say at the outset, as somebody who hasn't always been a great attendee at the Rules Committee, I very much appreciate the way that you and the ranking member have led this committee on this subject. Um, this committee's investigation may not have attracted the same level of attention that our friends in the House have, but I think the fact that you have um, been professional, bipartisan, and looking for the facts and looking for how we, we move forward uh, is a tribute to both of you and the members of the committee. Um, you indicated where I want to go, Mr. Bolton, is, is the my role from the intelligence uh, standpoint, and I'm lucky enough to have Senator Blunt and Senator King on the Intelligence Committee. I, 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 you, you raised the issue about security clearances, I know, back in your June report. And um, one of the things I, I hope that the Capitol Police knows is that this is an area that we have focused on for some time. I mean, a few years back, there was a 750,000 person backlog on security clearances. I actually give one of the few areas I give the Trump administration credit. They worked with us to reform that. We brought that down to about 250,000. We're down to about a 30-day wait in terms of a, a secret clearance. Uh, so I hope that the, the, the movement we've made on security clearance reform, and you've got to stay on this all the time, and reciprocity so that once you get clearance, you can take it with you, or you can move from entity to entity. Uh, we maybe ought to give you a, a briefing so you can get that to the Capitol Police. But I am concerned on this intelligence sharing, you know, between the IC kind of writ large and DHS and FBI, um, you brought up the point that uh, you were concerned about that ability to have that sharing. How do you think, do you think progress has been made since June? Are there any more formal procedures in place on, on how Capitol Police shares with DHS, FBI, and the IC um, intelligence? I would say that there has been some progress. We, we do have um, uh, some folks embedded in some of the task force and intelligence. I, I just see it as we need to do more. Uh, one, I think by, again, as I said earlier, making it into intelligence bureau, having somebody from the intelligence community has, has, has lived all their lives. Those, those folks are, I look at them, anybody who comes from the intelligence community, they're, they're folk that's cut from a different cloth. They are unique skills and sets. You just can't learn that, and it's something that you really takes time to actually know uh, that kind of a field. And that's where I, the department needs to recognize that they really need to put a lot of resources into the Intelligence Bureau. Now, I know they have hired additional intelligence analysts. Uh, there's a group right now that's in school uh, learning, but there, there's more that we need to, to hire um, and, and make it a very large and make it something – almost similar to what maybe the service, the Secret Service has, the FBI, that just this area here is we need to have that kind of abilities, especially around the Capitol complex. Well, I would, I would agree with that, although I don't, you know, and I'm not sure that would mean that every Capitol police officer needs a secret or top secret clearance, but having a large number, and one of the things that, I, that um, again, Senator Button, Senator King and I have looked at, just communications between different components of the IC, you've got to have a classified communication systems in place. And my fear is if we don't have that kind of classified information sharing so that you can have real-time information, the Capitol Police are always going to be at a disadvantage. If you have to wait for the FBI or the DHS or some other part of the IC to come and brief on a periodic basis, that's always going to be a hurdle. So do you know whether the Capitol Police has um, or has in place or putting in place any kind of classified uh, communications so you can go literally online real time and get updates from the IC? Yeah, they do have that capability. So they can go online and have real life um, communication with the community, um, whether it be in their SCIFs that they have throughout the, the comp, they have their own SCIF as well. So they can do that. Um, in real time. And I just want to real quick, the whole reason for whether or not the officers have either top secret or secret clearance, there's, there's a couple components to the reasoning for that. One is the insider threat 
having an individual that has to have a clearance, whether it be on or off duty, making sure that their, their, their lives comport to what their, their jobs entail. Um, but it also elevates your standards and your expectations of the people that you're bringing on. And it is a good recruiting tool as well that this is what we require. We require a high standard individual. And that's going to, I believe, that is going to attract additional folks to will look upon the Capitol Police as a job that you would wish to use as a career. And again, one of the things we're working through is this issue of reciprocity. So if you've, if someone's going to move from one part of the IC over to the Capitol Police, they could take their clearance with them. That's, that's still remaining a problem. I know I've got eight seconds left. I'm going to go completely to the other end of the spectrum. An issue I've been strangely interested in for some time is the performance of the K-9 units. And you pointed out that that was also a, a, a challenge. Um, in one of your early reports, is there any progress on the Capitol Police use of the dogs? Yeah, they are. They're starting to get their training that they need and uh, making sure they document whenever they, they do the, uh, some of their sweeps um, so that they do. They are making progress to updating their policy and procedures and getting the training. But again, it goes back to I really like to see their training is being conducted by Cheltenham and not by the units themselves here. And again, that. To me, that poses a problem. You need to have that separation of duties to make sure that it's separated from the day-to-day -day operation to training, and that they need to continue to move forward in that area. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for giving me the flexibility to go from security clearances to K-9 units. Okay, very good. Uh, Senator Capito, member of the Appropriations Committee as well, we thank you for your